Bill Cahotea is Pete's boss. He's been a dog handler for 20 years and is one of the country's fiercest police dogs, Buddy. <laughs> Buddy's an armed offender's dog. He snabbed some of the meanest crims in the country. Three years ago, Nathan Fenton beat his girlfriend to death and went into hiding. The headlines were huge about the police manhunt for Fenton. But what you didn't hear was that it was Buddy who got him. The killer's time on the run came to an end when Buddy sank his jaws into Fenton's shoulder. <laughs> What is it like, though, at that moment when you send Buddy in and you know the guy might have a gun? It does worry you. You know, he's my, he's my best mate. He's my, he's my partner in crime. Um, and you do, you do feel for him in there. And you, you hope to, there's no one in there. And if there is, they're not armed. Yeah. The very nature of their job is dealing with society's worst, people who would test the patience of most of us. We've caught, um, you know, we've caught a number of fenders where they've actually punched the dog and, and trying to poke their eyes out and kick them, that sort of thing, so... And every so often, the unthinkable happens. In 1983, Luke was shot by an armed man on Auckland's Queen Street. He survived, but was forced to retire. Well, my wife and um, the family, uh, they like him very much, so we're going to keep him at home. <laughs> And only two years ago, police dog Enzo was drowned by the man he was chasing. It's something a handler knows could happen on any job, the nightmare that their best mate won't be coming home. You know, you're losing a basically a family member. He's part of your life, uh, a big part of your life. He's there 24-7, your dog. And not only is he part of your working life, but he's there on your days off as well. So, yeah, it's... You'd handle it the same as you'd handle um, any death in the family, really. You'd take it pretty hard, and I'd take it pretty hard, for sure, and personally. And it'd take a bit of getting over it. And I think you'd, you'd never forget your dog. Like I say, he's your, your right-hand man, you know. You've, you've trained him from a, from a pup. You've got him out in the street, and, um, yeah, just for that to happen is just devastating. Uh. <laughs> oh, you make me smell. Oh. Pete's girlfriend Claire knows only too well what her two favourite blokes face every day. <laughs> Do you worry about each other? Mm. I worry about the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I always worry about the dog because he's just, he's only doing what he's told and he's doing his job and he doesn't know, know the difference. If there's any mistakes, the hospital's that way. <laughs> and there's a landing pad over here somewhere. Tonight, Phil and Pete are testing how Ronan reacts to firearms. They want him to eventually become an armed offender's dog so he can't be spooked by a gunshot. Put that gun down, mister! Put that gun down! Put it down! Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. Good boy, good boy! Good boy, good boy, good boy! Good boy, good boy! Right, I must not take this dog off you to stay there, the arms out of the side. Can't just put him on. Some dogs will go on and, and release, you know, but you want a dog that's going to go on and hang on to the person and um, before the, the handler or the AV squad members get there. Today Pete's working on a drug bust up north and they've already found a heap of what they're looking for. Oh, look at them all. Man, that's a big plant. Look at that one just there. Fuck, look at the size of that. It's a fucking tree. We'll start to bud up, see all the buds. Whoa. Plenty of cannabis and seeds, and among the haul, they've found this. Nasty, little weapon. Two sawn off shotguns ready to do some damage. Coming. A short time later, and at a different raid, the dog boys are here in case anyone tries to run. There's someone upstairs. Come down, mate. He just, uh, he's just stashed something in this little room here, JP. See that little room there? Yep. He was just hiding behind the curtain there. No one's managed to leg it yet, so we head off to someone else's greener pastures. Oh. That's what he spotted from the plane. <laughs> She's uh, three weeks away from being about the size of your arm. Hard yakker for Pete, and it's soon Ronan's turn. 
They get a call to track a suspected burglar who's abandoned a stolen car and fled into the bush. He wants to go over there, but just let me with it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Sounds like they have come back up this way. Come here. No, they're not even interested down there. We'll come up here, mate, and have a look anyway. If he's gone on the drink, he's on that other side somewhere. Not getting anything down here either. No luck today, but that's the way it goes. You're out there together and, and he's your backup, you know? When you're out there tracking through a field a couple of k's away from a main road and you find an offender, well, it's you and him. And he learns to rely on you and you learn to rely on him. And... Come on, come on, come on. Good boy. It costs 70 grand to fully train a police dog. These two cuties are being trained up, but there's no guarantee they'll make the grade. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> boy. We'll carry on down. Most police dogs last in the job for about seven years. After that, the handler can keep them. Phil's had two to the very end. I'm still thinking about them because they were both very good dogs, especially my first dog. Yeah, so you do obviously get very attached to them. If I came back in another world and wanted to be an animal, then I'd certainly want to be a police dog because um, they get well looked after, you know. And, um, and everything for the police dog's life is, is, is a big game. Stop him, <laughs> a risky game, but Nan and his best friend wouldn't play it any other way. It's really rewarding and it's, it's great fun. I wouldn't do anything else. I wouldn't give it up for the world. <laughs>